I'm Stuart Cameron. Welcome to Friday's Look at Rugby. Now, last weekend, we saw the two remaining unbeaten clubs in the Premiership, Stirling and Ayr, being defeated by Heriots and Hoyk. And with Gala's win at home to Glasgow Hawks, they now head the table. Hoyk's win at Ayr was impressive, while Melrose lost at home to Borough Muir. In National League One, Selkirk are the new leaders following their 77-5 win over Hillhead Jordan Hill. But Peebles won at Aberdeen, Kelso beat bigger, and Jed Forrest lost narrowly at home to Dundee. In National League Three, Hoyt YM beat DL. In the East League last Saturday, only St Boswell's in Division 2 and Walkerburn in the 3rd Division posted victories. Well, tonight we focus on the first Premiership derby of the season, Hoyk v Gala. And while Gala topped the table, Hoyk could easily be sitting in their place with two narrow losses in their first two games and, of course, that win last week at Ayr. Gala are going for 10 wins in a row over Hoyk, which will be a record for them, although Hoyk did 12 in a row against Gala back in the 1970s. And the Greens win at air last week meant that they won the Bill McLaren Shield, so that's up for grabs tomorrow as well. Yesterday, I spoke with Gala's Callum McIntosh at Netherdale, but first popped down to the home of rugby in Hoyk. Well, I've come down here to Mansfield Park, uh, have a little chat with Rory Hutton. I was going to talk to you, obviously we still will talk to you about Gala against Hoyk, but we were uh, thinking that you were actually going to be playing in this match, but on Monday you had a, a bit of really good news. Yeah, uh... I've been obviously called into the Scotland 7 squad for uh, this weekend in Romania. Uh, I'm delighted to be part of that. Obviously, it's uh, tough to, to be missing a Hoyt Gala game, and it's uh, just one of those things, but when you get the chance, you have to take it. So, uh, well, I'm sure your colleagues and, and the rest of the club are absolutely thrilled for you. Yeah, yeah, all the boys have been happy yeah, f- happy for me and saying uh, good luck and what, whatnot, but. Uh, Obviously, they've got other, another job to think about, and obviously that'll be in the back of my mind too. But uh, it's a privilege to be asked to, to play Scotland Sevens again, so I'll be uh, trying to take the chance. Because it was about 2010, I think, wasn't it? Four years ago when you uh, last played for Scotland at Sevens level. Yeah, uh, exactly that. So I think I played in the, the World Cup in Dubai, and then maybe a couple of tournaments after that, and. Uh, that was that was kind of me back to to the club rugby and I've enjoyed it and I've just a bit of freshness this season. It's, it's I feel like it's given me a kind of new lease of life and feeling fit. Obviously, I had my injury last year and stuff. I just feel a lot fitter and uh, then this call ups came too. So. No, it's uh, it's going good so far. It's been a weird career for you, hasn't it? Really, because I mean, I, I remember like many uh, when you got called up to Edinburgh first time round, and you played a Cardiff, I think it was at Murrayfield, and you threw that outrageous dummy, and all of a sudden, Rory Hutton was all over the papers, the saviour of Scottish rugby, and all this kind of stuff. Look, you're going red now, but it was absolutely <laughs> true that that was all that was going on. And then because there was a bit of a clear out and politics and everything else, you came away from that back to club. But you've always been sort of in the public eye, haven't you? I think everybody's always had an opinion on it, and I've just tried to keep myself to myself. Uh, it, kinda, it, hit, it did hit me quite hard when I got released and came back to club rugby, and it maybe took us a wee bit of time to to get over that. And a wee stint in Australia playing rugby just kind of freshened things up, and came back to hike there thereafter. And it's it's been it's. I've really enjoyed it ever since and I've always enjoyed playing for Hoyk so that was always going to be the, the, the place I was going to play so as you say it has been maybe there, back, there, back but uh, You can't just, keep a good man down Exactly, you just have to keep going for it and I think it shows when you're enjoying your rugby that you reap, reap rewards and that's what's been happening lately so mm-hmm. it's good a few days ago you were at Milbrae it's uh, one of the toughest places to go to get a result which must have done the club the world of good yeah it definitely has uh, I think that's the first time I've actually ever won up at Milbrae so that just tells you a story of how, how hard it is uh, so that was a massive win to get five points up there I think we, you, you could say it now that we might be the only team to do that this season so we have to take great encouragement for that and the key now is to, to go into the, this week's game and build momentum, so that's that's uh, the next job now. Because the first two games you could easily have won. I mean, we, we've seen this before, haven't we, with Hoyk? You've you've got these losing bonus points, you know, collecting them like medals, you know, yeah. but they're just one point at the end of the day and another five minutes of a game or whatever, it can be a totally different, different thing. So you could be top of the table at the moment quite easily. Yep, definitely. Uh, I think the boys always knew that 
we weren't far away and then going up there last week and getting that result just just proves it. So. And it's been again a, a strange league, isn't it, the way it started. No one um, has now got an, an undefeated run after just three games. Curry, as we saw, beat you and then they lost by 60 points to uh, to Gala, of course, up the road. And Stirling County got 42 points put past them by Heriot. So, I mean, this is this is a really weird scenario at the start of this season. Yeah, I, th- I, I tried to say to people that I didn't think anybody would run away with it this year and that when you when you look at the teams on paper, and I know it's only on paper, but there's there's results that could come from anywhere, and the the, the start of the season has proved that. Uh, as the season goes on, I think you'll you'll get a, a small difference in what teams are. But if you get into a good start, you you get on a roll, and it's sometimes hard to to stop a team that's on a roll. So that's what we'll be aiming to to try and get get going now. The whole buzz around the club from that result and the narrow losses at the beginning, and now you've got a home match against Gala. They're looking for ten wins on the trot. Yeah. You know, this is a, a, something that you just don't want to happen. I, yeah, def- definitely not. I think it's bad enough where it stands just now. So, uh, but that's that's just one of those things that you forget about. And at the end of the day, it's it's just the next game. Although it is Gala and it's, it's a massive game, I think the boys have it in their head just to. That you kind of live on last week's game. Now we have to to work hard, and the boys have been working hard this week again. So hopefully we can get the end, the, the right end of the result again. Well, we mentioned a, a statistic which is goes against Hoyk. Let's mention one that goes for Hoyk, and that's the fact that you've got the biggest win ever against Gala, seventy four points to nil, which wasn't so long ago. But their biggest total was thirty seven points. So you know, there's lots of pluses on both sides. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think we'd take a 3-0 victory. <laughs> Do you think mind. it will be that tight? Never mind uh, the 74. It's hard to call, but uh, I would imagine it, it's going to be pretty tight. Uh, they're, they're going well now, and I would imagine that we can build on the performance too for last week. So uh, <laughs> I'd like to call it a hoik, but you never know. <laughs> well, the best of luck, obviously, for the team this Saturday and for you in Bucharest. And I'm sure you'll be, uh, you know, checking your mobile phone quite regularly. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'll be on it constant whenever we have got the chance to see a result. And obviously, I hope, hope and wish I call the best, and I'll be giving it my my best too. So fantastic. Well, I'm down at Mansfield Park. Within a second, I'm going to be up at Netherdale. And now here we are at Netherdale, and uh, with me is Callum McIntosh, who's uh, had a pretty decent run against Hoyk teams in the past. Yeah, so far so good anyway. Of course, both teams uh, have started incredibly well. Hoyk narrowly losing their first two matches, matches they could easily have won, and then, of course, they go to Milbrae and uh, turn over air, which is something that Gala couldn't do, which will give them a lot of hope. Uh, it's good to see Borders teams doing well. Uh, great to see them getting a result up there. Made everybody look at the team and... See that big teams are there to be beaten by the younger, the lower teams, and uh, I think it's going to be like that this season. Because it certainly started off that way, three rounds in, and uh, everybody's been beaten. Yeah, I think predictions sort of go out the window. It's early in the season. Some teams maybe aren't at the form that the the war and new boys have came in. Um, so I think it's hard to tell at this time of the, the season, but early signs are positive for the rest of the season. Mm. Now, Gallen and Hoyt doesn't need a great deal of building up in its own right, uh, but um, there are a few other interesting little subplots, if you like, because the Bill McLaren Shield has come back to Mansfield Park and uh, it's something that Gala have had a couple of times and uh, you'd want that back again. Oh, definitely. Uh, if we, we were unlucky to lose out last year to being the first to get our, our name on that. Um, so, yeah, we want that back here. Uh, obviously, Bill's from Hoyt, so they'll want to keep it there and be the first to get on it. So, yeah, it's a... Um, massive honour to play for that and hopefully it comes back down here to Netherdale. And the other interesting thing of course is that you're going for 10 in a row against Hoyk. Last year we were going for the first in how many years for the league and that didn't go well so for us we need to not focus about stats and stuff like that and just focus on the, this next game, another game in the in the league and if we if we get that 10th victory and um, if we get the Bill McLaren shield it's all add-ons to, to that victory but I think first of all we just need to focus on the victory As Peter Palapoy said last week it's all very well having early leads in the competition etc but uh, you've got to hang on to it and build up that uh, that lead which is going to be unassailable you don't want to leave it to the last moment Yeah, I don't think we can afford to leave it to the last moment I mean fair enough this year we've got the playoffs and stuff but you really want to be the, the team at the top of the league uh, it's a team that finish at the top that people remember um, 
and if you're at the top, you're you're in good stead for for the playoffs. So it's all about progressing through the league and trying to finish as high as you possibly can. What's your own view on the playoff situation? I think it should be a league format where the winner takes all because it, you know you can perform uh, up and down throughout the season, finish fourth, and you're still in with, with a shout of winning the, the league. I think it should be the best team that performs the best throughout the whole season uh, and wins the right to win the league should be awarded the league. I think it's just another way for the SRU to get some more money out of the punters. Horrible to say, but that's my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we did ask for it yeah. at the end of the day. But, of course, I mean, you know, the, the whole season is, is terrific and, and knowing that Hoyke are playing well as well, to have three Borders teams really upping their game throughout the season is exactly what this area needs. Oh, definitely. Like, this is the, the heart of Scottish rugby. It might not uh, have the pro team that we used to, but it's still the heart of Borders rugby. And uh, it's good to see the Borders clubs up there. We were happy last week when we heard that uh, Hoyke had beaten Ayr. You know, great effort by them, and it actually sets up this weekend nicely. Uh, they're going in on a high, we're going in on a high, and uh, we'll see what happens. But it all makes for just a wonderful occasion. Oh, definitely. But like I said, uh, we're trying not to get carried away, carried away with all these uh, stats and stuff. Um, for us, it's just another game that we need to win, and um, Hoyke are going to be a great opponents and it'll be a tough battle like it was the last time we played at Mansfield hopefully it's a bit drier than the last time but I was going to say it was a bit of a mud bath last time yeah you know that was a great game came down to the last play to win it and those are the games that you love to be involved in a uh, bit of hard graft battles everywhere on the pitch and that's what you want to be involved in and you're going to love that uh, up front battle oh <laughs> that, that's why I play rugby you, you know you, you're there for the, the nitty gritty and the, the rough and tumble Um and yeah, I love love a battle. My thanks to Callum McIntosh and Rory Hutton, and that will be our featured game on Radio Borders tomorrow, Hoyke against Gala, with Stuart McFarlane and Dale Clancy covering the game. Melrose will be away at Glasgow Hawks in their Premiership game. In National League One, Peebles host bigger in a local derby, Jed Forrester away at Watsonians, Kelso visit Hillhead Jordan Hill, while Selkirk visit Dundee. In National Three, Hoyt YM take on East Kilbride on the road. East League One sees a derby between Langham and Duns, Berwick visit Dalkeith, Hoyt Quinns host Dunbar and Hoyt Lindeen are away at Portobello. In East League Two, Earlston are at home to Lismore while St Boswells look to increase their long unbeaten record when they take on Trinity Ackies at Jenny Moore's ground. Finally, in East League Three, Gallow YM are away to Queensferry, while Walkerburn have a home match against RDVC. Incidentally, sad news this week that for a second year running, Murray House from East League Three have had to pull out of the league, finding it impossible to continue. Well, finally tonight, a quick word about Scotland's Sevens team who are in Bucharest for competition before the IRB World Sevens series kicks in soon. From the 12 in the squad, there are seven with Borders connections. We heard earlier about Rory Hutton being called up after four years away from the international Sevens scene. Melrose's Damien Hoyland will win his first cap if he gets a start, which I'm sure he will. There's Jed Forrest's twins Gregor and Lewis Young, Captain Scott White and Mark Robertson from Melrose and former Selkirk player Niall Godsmark and one of the others in the squad is James Johnston who of course has played several times for Hoik so the Borders well represented and of course Callum McRae the former Melrose player now head coach of the Scotland 7 squad Super Scoreboard Live is on air from 2 o'clock tomorrow with Hugh Brown with the Sunday Rugby Roundup at 10 o'clock I'll be back next Friday but that's it for Rugby for tonight (laughs) 